It's a pleasure having you again, my friends, here on Will Edutech. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the fractional rule as it relates to when working with exponents or indices. All right. Now, here it states, if a base is raised to a fraction, the numerator of the fraction, that is, will become the power of the base. All right. And the denominator will become the root of the base. All right. And here we have a, an example. And this example is in its general form. Here we have a base A. And base A in this case is raised to a fraction. And that's M upon N. And if you notice, I have written it another way. And because here it says this is equal to, if you notice what is happening, my friends, the denominator of the fraction, which is N, becomes the root when it is written in this form by using a radical. And this little funny sign here, it's called a radical, or you can simply say it's written in third form. So please uh, get used to those two terms because maybe you'll be hearing me using them a lot from here on. Okay. Now, if you notice, the denominator is the root of the base here and my numerator of the fraction here it has become the power of the base okay so that's just another way of looking at it all right now let's look at the whole concept behind this why is it like that okay my friends let's say you have a eight raised to the two-thirds two-third power okay let's just make a quick note eight in this is example number one okay let's say we had eight and eight was raised to the Two third power, two upon three. Okay. Now, based on what the rule is saying, my friends, okay, I can rewrite this in third form. So I can say this is the cube root. If you notice the three, oops, that's ugly. Let's just get that a little bit better. Okay, that looks that looks much better. So really, what this is saying, the denominator will become my root. So I'm I'm really taking the cube root of eight. Okay, and I'm going to write the eight now on under my radical sign. So this is eight, and if you notice, my numerator now becomes the power. So I'm going to raise eight to the second power. Okay, that's simply what it is saying. Now, really, if we should expand this, my friends, we would have we would have here the cube root, the cube root of eight. If you notice, eight is squared. So what that is saying really is eight is multiplying itself two times. So that's eight times eight. Okay. So really, we're taking the cube root. Okay. The cube root of eight times eight. That's sixty-four. Okay. And the cube root of sixty-four. Uh, is really four okay my friends so our answer is four but however if you're if you're not sure we could show you how you get that on a calculator so let's just pull up our calculator just to show you how you would calculate this on your calculator here is it what I'm gonna do I'm going to uh, put 64 into my calculator okay because that's what I'm that's the base I am taking the cube root of so I'm saying 64 and I want to find the cube root of that so I'm looking for the button and it's this button that my pointer is presently on if you notice there's a little three outside the radical sign there and I'm taking the cube root of that so I'm press that and if you notice I have a four there for my answer okay so that's how you do your calculator depending on the type of calculator that you're using it may be different so you may have to do go about it a little bit differently okay my friends now let's look at this another way just to give you the whole idea behind it the whole concept of what is happening so let's look at the same question and we're going to be using a second method okay my friends now really we have a, they gave us here eight raised to the two-thirds okay same problem we're looking at different method okay we're going to be working this out as a fractional exponent now as in the first form on my left hand side right there okay now really and I, and I want you to see the concept behind this really what I'm asking myself uh, in working it out a second method I'm going to ask myself can it the base it be written in a lower base okay well let's check that my friends let's check that uh, in earlier lessons, especially the, ter the, the two first lessons in this playlist, we looked at uh, when representing a base, when using a power to represent a base. And basically what we're saying, if you should note carefully, the base 8 can be is the same as 2 times 2. Okay, my friends? So we can say 2 times 2, that's 4. 4 times 2, that's 8. So really, 8 is the same as 
8 is, and remember the amount of times we are multiplying a common base, that's the power the base is raised to. So since we, we have a common base 2, I can rewrite that, and I, and I am multiplying 3 sets of 2, so I can just simply raise that to the third power. Now what this is saying, uh, 8 is the same as 2 to the third power, okay? So this is what I am asking myself. Can 8 be, re be written in a lower base? Yes, 8 is the same as 2 raised to the third third power okay now since this is 8 I must now remember that 8 was raised to the two thirds so I can just simply put that in a bracket okay because this is 8 and I'm going to just simply raise that to the 2 upon 3 two thirds power okay now my friends I hope you're seeing the connection here okay uh, for in the first method and the second method if you notice I have the cube root of 8 square right there okay and if you notice when I wrote 8 in its lowest base it was raised to the third power okay so I hope you're seeing that you're making that general connection there now if you should look at it and the cube root of of my base here would be 2 okay I hope you're making that general connection however let's move now based on the power to power rule we would have learned that when a base is raised to a power and it's all raised to another power we simply multiply our powers okay so i'm just simply going to multiply out that and here i i can just cancel out three we can just put that over one so we can say three into itself goes once three into itself goes once so really what i'm left with here my friends is two is being raised two two is being raised to the Two ones, two. I'm just looking at the powers. One times, one times. Two is two. So I'm just going to raise my power, my base two to the power of two. And we all know that two to the two is the same as two times two, which is equal to two times two, and that's a four. Okay, that's a four, and that's our answer. And if you notice, in both cases, we got we got back the same answer. So this, this then, my friend, would friends would have proven that if a base if a base a is raised to a fractional power okay m over n as we have it there m upon n then it is the same as it is equal to same as if i should write it in third form okay where my denominator will become the root and my numerator will become the power okay Hope that this was useful. Hope that this was useful. However, before I go, I think maybe I should work another example just to give you the general idea as what is happening. Okay, let's just pull this up a bit. Let's say you walk into the exam room, my friends, and you saw a question such as this on the paper. Let's let's just change this quickly. Let's say you saw a one upon, and this is example number. Let's call this B. Okay. Let's say you saw a problem looking like this. 1 upon 625. 625. Okay? And that is all raised. This was all raised to the negative 1 upon 4. Okay? Now, based on the previous rule that we looked at, or rule number 4 rather, the inverse rule, we, we learned that when a base is raised to a negative index, you can just simply flip the base. Okay? turn it upside down that is and the power becomes positive and that's it that's the uh, inverse rule and if you're not sure you could always revisit that playlist on that so really what I'm going to be saying here my friends I'm just going to flip one upon 625 and I will get 6 625 upon 1 okay now remember 625 upon 1 is the same as 625 so we could just simply put that in a bracket okay we're going to put that in a bracket and we're going to, the power now becomes positive. Okay, so that's now positive. It's no longer negative one fourth. It's now positive one fourth. Okay, so my friends, this implies, this, imp this implies that if you notice what is happening now, I can now write this as a third. Okay, so I can simply say I am taking the root here and that's the fourth root, my friends, the fourth root of 625 of 625 because 625 would be my base now okay remember anything over one is the same as itself okay so 625 would be my base and my numerator would go in the power okay 
would go in the power there. So what I'm saying, I'm taking the fourth root of 625. And the fourth root of 625, my friends, my answer would be 5. Okay? That would be my answer. And I can just simply show you how you work that out on the calculator. Uh, just in case you're not sure, let's just move this up here a bit. So really, to find the to find the sixth root, the fourth root rather of 625 on the calculator, let's just clear that. You you're basically let's just put in the base 625, okay, my friends, and you want to find the fourth root. So you're taking the root. If you notice, this is a button I pressed uh, with the third here now, and I am pressing four. So the fourth root of 625 is equal to 5. There we go. I uh, hope that this lesson was useful. Uh, feel free to ask a question if you're still not sure or leave a comment and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Bye-bye.